Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to 10 of the most spectacular space launch failures. I mean, this video, I'm sure like it's going to be bittersweet for me because it's honestly seeing these huge rockets explode. I can't lie, it is quite the sight to see. But as a space enthusiast, I know how much work effort money goes into each of these launches you know we're talking tens to hundreds of millions of dollars per launch in a lot of cases so to just see that go up in flames just you know it just must be tragic you know years of preparation but yeah this video here i'm sure it's going to be really eye-opening really spectacular for me to watch so let's do it Eighty million dollars that they put into this. Two, one. Looks good so and far. Lift off of Antares, the board of three missions that bring Cygnus on its third CRS mission, the ISS. Look good. Looks good that so far. Oh! 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 Oh my god. Whoa. Damn. You just gotta hope that there's no people in the nearby vicinity. Gosh. The possibility that trouble may develop with the Atlas or the Redstone during the countdown. They're saying classified, but man, this had to be probably approaching the hundreds of millions. Or during the takeoff is looked squarely in the eye by the astronauts and the engineers behind Project Mercury. It's on fire! This booster was not a Mercury vehicle, but imagine the worst possible situation for the astronaut, that his capsule is now mounted on top of this atlas. The escape rocket takes the capsule away from the booster. Whoa! Goodness me, huge explosion. Huge explosion. I would imagine it's probably because the booster was still full, full of all of the uh, of the fuel. So you had all of that explosive material just waiting to. No, we set, cease, sign, cat, trois. Looks good. Oh. Decollage. Oh man. Is it? Is it? Yeah. The launch is. It's. It's. It's going up. It's rising. It's not gone off yet. I'm just waiting for the inevitable. Looking good. So when does it explode? Looking good. Oh, oh no. It, oh. oh no. 37 seconds into the launch, the onboard computers decided 501 was 90 degrees off course. So was it the computers that decided to self-destruct then? Sixty million dollars. Up in smoke. Oh gosh. I'd imagine that you know with these failures there's still lessons to be learned because you know when they do diagnostics and things like that maybe they'll be able to find where they went wrong they'll be able to take you know things to avoid in future so it just makes for a better iteration of the next rocket Gosh. 
huge fireball. Massive fireball. according to plan for some distance. During this time, the missile was stable in pitch, yaw, and roll. Just and waiting for the inevitable. Involving one engine. Ah, oh, yeah, and one of the engines. thereafter, another engine also lost power. It was therefore necessary for the range safety officer to destroy the missile by remote control. Man, look at the fireball. Just look at the amount of flames coming off that. So that's the missile. They've not self-destructed yet, have they? When are they going to self-destruct? There we go. Debris from the missile fell on the test base and in the sea just offshore from the base. <sighs> Nearly all critical components were recovered. These parts and data radioed to the ground during flight were studied to isolate the exact cause of the trouble. Still, all that time and work, you know, to see it fail must be devastating. Must It must make the scientists just... Huge disappointment. It's only normal, though. Oh. What happened there? One in five Titan rockets fail. Tough odds if you're a rocket man. What's happened? That one just, it just combusted. Minus 10, 8, 7, 6, six 5, 4, 3, 2. Is it me or does it look a little bit off kilter? One ignition sequence start and lift off of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, adding to the International Space Station access for future American rockets. And Falcon has cleared the tower. <sighs> Vehicles programming damage. Oh man. Is active. Looks amazing. Uh power to other shit now at all. Oh man, it's, it's just the waiting. It's the wait for the explosion. Oh, remain nominal. <sighs> when is it going to happen? Impact chill has begun. T plus two minutes. Altitude 32 kilometers. Speed one kilometer per second, downrange distance 13 kilometers. One kilometer per second speed. That's insane. Daddy coming back shows vehicle on course, on track. Whoa! Oh dear, there it is. What happened? It looked like, oh man, it looked like there was a leak or something. Because I think it's liquid oxygen that they use as fuel. I feel like there was a leak. And it may be... After nearly a year's delay posed by its liquid hydrogen fuel... The liquid hydrogen, not oxygen. <laughs> Mighty Centaur is on its pad at Cape Canaveral for a maiden flight. It is to be boosted into space by an Atlas for a 15-minute flight. A flight scheduled to study the performance of the temperamental hydrogen fuel. The Centaur is designed to put a payload of more than a ton on the moon or a thousand pounds in the vicinity of Mars or Venus. The first few seconds of the shoot go without incident. The Centaur climbs to 30,000 feet, then malfunction. Oh, 
Oh man, big explosion. The immediate cause of the... Ex I have to say, you know, if you were an astronaut in this era, you know, hats off to you because I imagine the rate of failure was considerable. So any time that you got in a capsule, mate, those could have been your last moments. Explosion is not known, but if it happened in the Atlas booster, it means a probable delay for the next U.S. orbital flight by astronaut Malcolm Carpenter. Long lens cameras capture pieces of the wrecked missile falling into the sea, falling like a wounded bird. However, in the race for space, scientists find progress in every failure. Gosh. God, a lot of these Atlas fa they they failed. There's been at least four or five on this list. Oh man! Oh my God! Look at the size of the explosion. This is not a common occurrence. In this case, there were no human casualties. The catastrophe was not the result of individual carelessness, but it could have been. In a situation with human lives at stake, disaster is a potential, and lives are at stake, even your life, wherever toxic propellants are handled. Man, that was huge. 65 million. It's, oh no, it's, it's, it's swaying. It's swaying. Oh dear. Oh my gosh, it's, it's out of control. It's out of control. Oh god, don't go into the floor. Don't go into the ground. Whoa, Mike. Absolutely mind blowing. I just cannot believe the, uh, the, man, the scale of the explosions. I know that rockets are big, big vehicles with a lot of fuel, but the, the last two in particular looked like the explosions were like a kilometer wide. It was just, just jaw dropping, man. And, um, you know, it sucks to be, you know, the scientists working on those projects, but as the narrator mentioned, you know, there's progress to be made in failures as well, because you learn lessons. So, um, oh man, and look where we are today. You know, we, the rate of failure is so low amongst the SpaceX launches now and uh, hopefully it's just gonna get better from now on. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.